All right, guys. So um, purpose of today's call, the topic today is just to go over some of the EXP stuff. Um, that's one of our goals is to expose you guys to more of the features and benefits and resources that EXP has to offer. Um, so I want to show you guys like what the dashboard looks like and kind of go through some of those things and then uh, how to access some of the trainings that they have as well. And then also talk a little bit about, um, you know, how to attract agents to EXP and to your downline and stuff like that. Just, just some strategy on, you know, what I see working um, with some of my upline. Um, so real quick, um, who has been into the EXP dashboard and like played around with it, like the back end thing? Have any of you guys? Alessandra? I've been to it, but it, I don't. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull up and show you guys. Uh, so the EXP dashboard, I'm going to put my login info. And I'm going to talk about the revenue share stuff as well. Um, because it's something we haven't really talked about, but it's, it's a huge huge uh pillar of our business that i think we're missing out on um and before i before i even go into that um i think it's just a, understanding the mindset of exp and what exp is all about and this was a turning point for me like just a couple of weeks ago i was listening to a podcast to one of my coaches uh lars some of you guys uh, who've been around know who he is, Lars. So Lars Hedenborg was one of my real estate coaches that I was in his coaching program for about five years. And um, Jason and I were there. We've gone to a lot of events. We were coaching with him and, and his group of coaches on a monthly basis. They do uh, masterminds every week. And that's really where we learned how to do all the stuff that we implement at, at PRG right now, all of our systems, how to build the team, how to recruit, uh, the admin, like, even down to like the canned responses, our buyer presentation, our website, like how to get leads, like every single thing that we do at PRG, we learn from this guy, Lars and, and his coaching platform. Um, because Lars was running the team at a high level. He was running a, a team that was doing like 300 plus transactions a year. And he was completely out of production. He had a sales manager, he had an ad, uh, operations manager, he basically was just like the CEO of the business. Now he went from being a producer, you know, to full on team leader to exiting the business and just more running it. Um, and it was running on its own. And he was probably only working maybe one or two days a week in his business. Um, and they were still closing, you know, 300 plus transactions from there. He decided to branch off and open up a coaching program, which showed agents how to build a team, just like he built. So he built the team. Then he's showing agents how to build the team. And then now from there, he took his whole business to EXP and he's coaching agents and giving them the coaching for free if they join him at EXP. So he's been at EXP for two years um, and we've only been there for a year and a half, uh, a year and a half. He only joined EXP like six months before us and he already has about 1500 agents under him at EXP. Um, because he already had all this clout. He already had all this momentum. He already had all these coaching clients. Like we were part of his co coaching clients. So what he did is he started going to all of his coaching clients and saying, Hey, come join me at EXP. Right. So these were like leaders already who had teams, which is how he built so many agents under him. Right. Cause he was recruiting, he was basically recruiting team leaders like me and they were coming with, you know, a bunch of agents already. And then team leaders know other team leaders and then so on. It just starts building. So I'm sharing this with you guys because I want you guys to start thinking about, you know, what else is possible besides just selling homes, right? The bread and butter is selling homes because you can't make any revenue share if no homes are sold, right? So homes have to be sold. A commission has to be generated in order for there to be a profit that the company shares with you. So the bread and butter is always going to be selling homes, but you got to also realize that recruiting agents or we call it agent attraction is also can be its own business, right? 
So you can have the business of selling homes where you make your commissions. And then you can also have your business of attracting agents. And that's a whole separate business for you, right? And you could do the two things simultaneously because you guys are out there in the field already you know, helping clients, talking to other agents as it is. So it's really easy to start adding this stuff to your, your tool belt, so to say, because you're already out there in the trenches, right? Like each one of you, as you service clients, you deal with other agents, right? And you deal with some good agents, you deal with some bad agents, right? Um, you deal with some that are producers, you deal with some that maybe they don't produce as much, but there's definitely agents that you guys are starting to meet and know um, as you go out there and close deals. So you got you to gotta think to yourself, is that an opportunity for me to build additional revenue than just only selling houses, right? Um, so the light bulb went off for me, like as I look more into this, when I started hearing the common thing, like with these guys who have a lot of people under them, there was a common phrase that they would use and it was my agent attraction business. They called it an agent attraction business. Like it's, it's, it's a whole separate business that they have. They didn't just say, oh, I just recruit agents, right? They're like, no, I have my, my sales business where I sell homes. And then I have my agent attraction business. They treat it like another business, right? And they start slowly start to build momentum. So going forward, that's how I'm going to be treating it where the same way I try to run my sales business at a high level where there's systems and processes I'm going to be implementing systems and processes to create an agent attraction business, right? And that will become one pillar of, of what I do. Um, and I'm going to pull up like a little, little chart here. And something for you guys to, to look at. You have your sales business, right? This is where you help people buy and sell. Uh, you get the link? I don't know if you're showing something. Can you guys see my whiteboard? It is. Can you see the whiteboard? Okay. Um, so you're in commissions. And I want you guys to start thinking of your business in this way because it's really a mindset shift, right? Your sales business, this is you helping people buy and sell. You earn commissions, right? But really what this should be, this should be a vehicle for you, right? This is a vehicle that brings income in, pays the bills, but then also it can be a vehicle for you to take the money that you're earning and implement it into other things that are going to make money for you, right? So sales business is one. Then you'll have your agent attraction business. Oh, sorry. Right. And this is basically where you earn revenue share. for introducing agents to EXP. And when you introduce agents to EXP, they don't have to be part of PRG, right? So there's two options. Option one is team PRG, right? At EXP. Option two, is just exp downline right because that's the thing sometimes we get caught up in is we think that hey if i have an agent bring them into the office join our team right but our team is not necessarily for everybody right our team is going to be for a certain type of agent there's a certain type of agent we're looking for um not all agents may want to join our team but they may see the power in joining exp so you don't want to pigeonhole yourself where you're only saying, hey, join PRG, because if they don't like PRG, then they go somewhere else and then you don't benefit in any way from that agent. Mauricio, you have your hand raised. 
Um, yeah, so I, I had a question, but I think I answered it for myself because I think we talked about this. Um, what if they're already on eXp, but they want to be under your downline? Is that possible? No. Um, they would have to quit eXp for six months and then they can rejoin and, and move to a different downline. Um, so that's the way it works. Whoever recruited them, once they're on, your, on that person's downline, they can't switch. Uh, yeah, they may, it's, it's pretty hard to switch. They make it impossible just because it's, it, then it makes it not fair, right? So that's why choosing your downline is important. So if you have anybody that is interested in eXp, you need to reiterate the fact that not all, not all uplines are created equal. Mm -hmm. And that's very true because, for example, our uplines that we have, like I'm your guys' upline and then above me you have Kenny. You have Jeremy Larson, you have Daniel Beer, you have Kyle Whistle, you have, uh, I think, Brent Gove, Jay Kinder. These are like the top guys in the whole entire company. There's 85,000 agents in EXP, and the guys that are above us, they're the top ones in the whole entire company, right? Mm -hmm. So you got, we're in the, the downline, like the best downline in the whole entire company. And that's not by, that's not by accident, that's by us researching who we were going to join with before we joined exp because i could have joined under anybody in the whole entire company eighty-five thousand agents right but i specifically chose kenny and i was going to go under daniel beer directly because i know daniel beer from our lars coaching program i know daniel beer for several years back so i could have gone under him directly but then that would have cut me off from being under Kenny and having a better relationship with Kenny and Jeremy who are here locally because Daniel beer is out of San Diego. So if I would have went under Daniel beer directly, then I wouldn't have been under Kenny and Kenny would have been like on a different line and we would have basically be competitors. So it was by design, right? By design, bro. Absolutely. By design because Kenny makes money off me, right? He makes money off, off us and our team because we're under him. So if anybody's going to make money off me, I want to make sure that it's someone that is going to benefit me as well. Right. Very true. Uh, so I chose Kenny because Kenny has a big presence in the East Bay and his team was built, you know, blowing up. And then Jeremy is in the Santa Cruz area and there was no big hitter in EXP in the South Bay. There's a few people in EXP, but there was no like big teams or big recruiters or anything like that. So when I met with these two guys, it was like, dude, that would be perfect. Now I'm in the middle. You got East Bay. You got Santa Cruz. It's like, boom, we have this whole alliance now. And then even going all the way up to San Diego, you know, we have the support from Jeremy and Kyle Whistle. I mean, uh, Kyle Whistle and Daniel Beer and all them as well. Um, so I'm telling you that because when you're talking to agents about EXP, you need to stress, hey, don't just choose any downline. You need to choose, I mean, the upline. You need to choose an upline who is going to benefit you and a huge benefit to our upline um, is what's called the fast forward movement. So you guys know what the fast forward movement is? So the fast forward movement, for those of you guys that don't know, is this is basically what Daniel Beer and Kyle Whistle have branded for their, all the people under them. So anybody who comes under them, it's like they call, they gave their organization a name called the Fast Forward Movement. And that's led by uh, Daniel Beer and Kyle Whistle. So by you being under me and us being under Kenny and all them, us being under Daniel Beer, we're part of the Fast Forward Movement. The fast forward movement, they do masterminds every single Monday. Um, some of you guys have jumped on those masterminds. They're really, really good. Um, they do events. Uh, right now, it's the EXP conference in Las Vegas. They have, they have private events just for the fast forward movements that these guys put on. Uh, coaching. There's like the, uh, the, listing co the listing training that we did. The uh, sales training with Bill Pipes. That was all offered through... Uh, the fast forward movement through Daniel Beer and Kyle Whistle. They created this coaching thing called the Agent Academy, and it's all through their stuff. Um, so we get access to all of those things that preferred prices and all that stuff as well. So I think it's important to share these details with you because when you're if when you're talking to agents about EXP, there's so many benefits that 
we just don't know about and we're not even talking about. Um, and then if an agent wants to join our team at PRG, well, that's a whole nother added benefit because we're a local team, top producers, you know, one of the highest reviewed teams here in the South Bay, uh, you know, the leads, the systems, the culture, all those different things that make us great as a team. It's also a great place for an agent to join as well. Um, or you say, hey, maybe you're not a good fit for our team. Maybe you don't want to be a part of the team, the structure and all that stuff, but you want to align with EXP, then you need to align with the fast forward movement and you get that through me, basically. And you're going to get access to all these masterminds, all this coaching, all this other stuff. So are there any questions, guys, about so far about just understanding the difference between your sales business? Just, uh, Enrique, did yeah. you know who Tristan Ayumada is? Yeah. Did you know he just joined DXP? Yeah, that's a huge announcement. The guy who founded Lab Code Agents. So huge. Yeah. I don't know who he's under. He is under um uh, I think they said he may have went under just I don't know. I, I don't know. I gotta find out. But I'll tell you his stories. I think Daniel got a photo with him or something. Maybe I mean if you know like Daniel and Kyle well, you can invite him or something. Yeah. I don't know if he's under our under our downline, our lineage, but I'll find out. But that's huge. I mean, because that guy's a big uh, a big name. He founded Lab Code Lab Code Agents, which is like that big Facebook group, right? Where there's like thousands and thousands of I don't know how many thousands of people there are on there, but it's a lot. Um, probably at least 40, 50,000 agents that follow him that are part of his whole uh, thing. He just moved over to EXP, and then now he's also going to be part of uh, oh. Agent Academy, which is led by Daniel Beer and Dan Cheplak and all that, they're now going to be part of EXP, like to offer to all the agents at EXP. So like there's some big moves that these guys are making on the back end. Um, and we're all a part of that stuff, guys. Um, so business one, business two, business three is going to be your investments. Right. And your investments could be, what are you doing with your money? Right. Like you're making money in commissions. What are you doing with that money? This is going to be your stock, right? So you can do EXP stock, which I would, I'm doing that. I'd recommend investing in the stock because you're getting at a discount. So you're already walking in with equity. The whole stock market is down FYI. So those of you guys that are scared about stocks, it's, every single stock is down right now, right? It's just the whole stock market in general is down. But it's just like when you're talking to your clients, right? When do you want to buy a house? Do you want to buy the house when the market's up or do you want to buy a house when the market's down, right? You want to buy it when it's cheaper, right? Because that's where the money is made. When the markets go down, that's where people get rich, right? Because they, they, if they have money to invest, they gobble up stock, they gobble up properties. And then when the market comes back up, that's where they gain all their equity. So by buying the stock, even though it's down, um, you're buying it cheaper so that later on when the stock market does recover, which it will, you know, in the history of stocks, it's always gone up over time. You now walked in with some equity. So I'm going to keep buying it. Um, obviously, you're not going to put all your eggs in one basket, but it's important to start gobbling up some of this, this stuff so that you create this for yourself in the future. So EXP stock, um, this is going to be like your retirement accounts. Um, rental properties, flips, right? If you guys, if you guys are into flipping property, anything like that, something you can definitely look into. Um, but what I want you guys to look at guys is that business one, a lot of us are only just focusing on business number one. That's the only thing that's on our mind, right? We're just busy with buying and selling. That's everything. But in the long run, guys, if you don't take this money that, that you're earning from business number one and start putting it to work for you, 
right? Then you're going to be working forever, right? We don't want to, we don't want to be the agent that's 70 years old, still hosting open houses, right? Or 60 years old, like this real estate should be a vehicle for you to build long-term wealth. And the only way you're going to build long-term wealth is by taking that money that you're making and start putting a portion of it into some other investments that are going to make money for you. So if you don't, if you're not buying the EXP stock, that's a place you could start off at, right? If you don't have a retirement account, an IRA, uh, SEP IRA, Roth IRA, anything like that, that's a place you can start off with. Start putting some money away in some of those and let that thing grow for you. Um, a rental property, right? You can buy a rental property. In our area, it's a little expensive to buy a rental property, but if you go outside of our area, there's opportunities out there. Like we bought a, Jason and I own a fourplex in Stockton, which has done really well for us. We bought it, uh, over 10 years ago when the market went down. So right now it's like when the market is starting to soften up, this is when there's opportunities that you can buy that are going to do good for you in the long run. Um, but you got to put your money to work. Then business number two, right? We're only look, a lot of us are only just one track minded, just that business number one, you have this whole agent attraction business in front of you. So every time you work with an agent going forward, you need to think to yourself, is this an agent that I could potentially recruit, attract to the company, attract to our team, have them as my downline? And depending on the level of the agent, you can leverage people above you to help recruit them. All right. So for example, I'm going to close this whiteboard. For example, let's say you meet like a top producer, right? Like a top producer agent and they're freaking killing it. They're a big listing agent or something like that. You may think, oh, okay, they may not want to join PRG. I'm not going to introduce them to PRG. Like they're already up and running. They're already closing deals and stuff like that. And that I can't see that agent joining our team. That's fine. Maybe they're not an agent that's a fit for our team, but that doesn't mean I can't get them on the phone with Daniel Beer. That doesn't mean I can't get them on the phone with Jeremy Larson. That doesn't mean I can't get them on the phone with one of these high ups that are freaking way above that agent to help make an impression on that agent and sell the benefits of, of adding these other pillars to their business. So sometimes we're only thinking team PRG and then we're not even having that conversation or making the attempt because we don't think that agent would ever join us. Does that make sense guys? Right? So if you know a top hitter out there, and you believe like in the EXP model and you believe that it's a, it's a great model for agents to build wealth and collaborate and all that stuff, you need to start figuring out who can I get that person in front of that's going to help me recruit them. I'll give you a perfect, perfect example. Um, Jeremy Larson, who knows who Jeremy Larson is, right? Jeremy Larson's two guys, two levels above us, right? We got Kenny above us and then we got Jeremy. So Jeremy recruited Kenny. But when Jeremy recruited Kenny, Kenny is actually doing more business than Jeremy. Like Kenny's team was way bigger than Jeremy's. Kenny had a bigger following. Jeremy was, you know, doing like a hundred million out of Santa Cruz. Um, you know, so it's still a decent amount, you know, for his team and, and he's a, a top producer, but it wasn't like Jeremy had like this whole clout to try to recruit someone like Kenny who's doing hundreds and hundreds of transactions per year. So what Jeremy did was Jeremy leveraged Daniel Beer and Kyle Whistle and the guys that are above him to recruit Kenny to come under him. And now look at where Kenny's at, right? Kenny has over 350 agents on his team, on Team Fast. And then not including all the other agents that he's recruited who are not on his team. So uh, I think Kenny has like over 500 agents under him. So now those 500 agents under Kenny are now under Jeremy. Just me alone, I think I have between the agents that are on our team and some other agents that are under us, I have like 65 agents under us, under my downline. So between Kenny and my team, you got about 600 agents that are now under Jeremy. And Jeremy makes a piece off of every single deal.
It's crazy, right? So all it takes is for one of you guys to recruit a Kenny or someone who's like a big builder, someone who's going to go do something big, right? You don't have to be the person doing something big. That could be the only one person you recruit and they freaking change your whole entire business. So just to do the math, the way it works when you recruit, um, let me go back to this whiteboard. Can you guys see my whiteboard again? Okay. So I'm going to do the math. You can make up to like 3,200 bucks a year for an agent that you recruit that's directly under you. And then it goes down like seven levels and it changes for each level. But what they do is they take an average because some agents will produce, some agents won't produce, some agents produce higher, some agents produce lower. So the average is roughly 800 bucks per year per agent under you. Right? So just from Kenny and Enrique, right? Roughly about 600 agents in the downline for Jeremy. 600 times 800. What's that number? Four, 480,000. 480,000 bucks per year that Jeremy will now make. And here's the key word, forever. Forever, right? Who's seen the Sandlot? Forever, right? So when you look at it like that, guys, and that's just Kenny and Enrique that Jeremy recruited, right? Jeremy recruited me indirectly because I strategically went under Kenny. Kenny went under him. Jeremy's recruiting a whole bunch of other agents too, like outside of us, right? He's probably, he's probably a, a thousand agents under him, I would say, pretty soon. And here's the thing, is, Ken, is Kenny, will Kenny and Enrique stop recruiting agents? Yes or no? No. No, we're not going to stop, right? Because this is part of our business plan. This is business number two, agent attraction. So Kenny's going to keep recruiting. He's recruiting like a fucking madman, right? I'm going to keep recruiting, not as fast as Kenny. But this is just part of our business now, right? We understand that this is part of what's going to build, you know, revenue for us forever. So by next year, the amount of agents under Kenny is going to be a lot higher. The amount of agents under me is going to be a lot higher. So Jeremy's downline continues to grow on its own. So if Jeremy were to just stop recruiting right now and just let the agents under him keep recruiting. If every agent recruited one or two agents a year, this 600 goes to 1200 by next year. And then 1200 goes to 2400 by the following year, right? If every one of these six agent, these 600 agents just recruited one agent per year, you go 600, then you go 1200, then 1200 goes to 24, then 24 goes to 48, then 48 goes to, what is that, 96. So in five years from now, it's going to be safe to say that Jeremy has 10,000 agents under him. Just by letting that thing just continue to do what it does, right? Enrique, uh, I think yeah. it's also too important to explain that, again, Jeremy did this, but what he led with was his production with, what, with just doing real estate. He wasn't highly active out there recruiting. It was a natural attraction. Yeah. And that's what we'll go into next, right? Like, how do you recruit, right? So right now we're understanding the power of recruiting, the power of the income, the power of making this a business for you, right? But then we'll talk about in a second, we'll talk about now, how do you do this? And what's the, what's the right way to do it so that it serves the, 
the person you're recruiting and it serves you as well, right? Because whenever we talk about recruiting, immediately things go off in people's heads, right? You got like, oh, I'm not, I don't want to recruit. Like that feels weird, right? Or we got the, um, you know, I don't want to be known as the recruiter. I don't want to be known as anything like that, right? Um, raise your hand, like if some of those things go off in your head, like when you hear recruiting, you think like scheme or scam or <laughs> multi-level marketing. You know, what's funny is, uh, is I was talking to my barber about this the other day, right? Cause he was asking me, how's it going? And then I said, oh yeah, dude, it's like blowing up. And I was telling him about some of the agents and I was even telling him about like Kenny. And then the guy, the barber next to me, he goes, oh, what is that? Like a pyramid scheme? So automatically, like he doesn't even know what it's about, but he says the word pyramid scheme, right? So what is a pyramid scheme? Who knows the definition of a pyramid scheme? Pyramid scheme? I think the main difference between a pyramid scheme and something else is for pyramid schemes, you're required to purchase inventory. You're required to buy something and to hold on to something. And that's where, you know, people have that negative feeling. But I think for this, it's, if we had nothing to provide, I, I would agree. But just that Monday training, if we can invite people to that, I think that does all the work for you. Yeah. So it's a pyramid scheme, guys, is where you're actually scamming someone, right? It's where you're making them buy something or you're making them put money into something. And you're like, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, hey, Jason, put a thousand bucks in this, bro. And I'm going to make you 10,000. Hey, Iris, put a thousand bucks. I'm going to make you 10,000. Hey, Lily, put a thousand bucks. I'll make you 10,000. And then what I do is I take all your thousands and then I pay Anna who put in money. And I go, here, Anna, here's your 10,000 I was talking about, right? But really, all I did was take money from Lily, Jason, and Iris, and, and Alessandra to pay her that thing. And then I just repeat the process. And no one is actually, there's no money being earned. It's just a bunch of money, people's money being taken away. And then they're just shuffling it around. And then eventually, someone gets screwed at the bottom, right? The guy, the last guy that puts the money in, once it all circulates, and that person gets screwed. That's called a Ponzi scheme, right? And that's like what Bernie Madoff was doing with millions and millions of dollars. And that's where these, these things like pyramid schemes come about. Then you got multi-level marketing, which is a, what a lot of big companies do. Like you have your, uh, your Avon, you have your uh, Monet, Monet, right? Or whatever. Uh, you have all these products, right? But with those, you actually have to buy a product yourself, right? Um, how do I know? I mean, because I've known a lot of people who did that. My kid's mom was in that as well. But for her to for her to sell the product, she has to also become a member and subscribe to like hundreds of bucks per month worth of product, right? So you have to buy a product to be able to sell a product, right? And then they you get a piece of the of the profit, right? That's like true multi level marketing, right? Where you have to buy something. With what we do here at EXP, you don't have to buy anything. You have to sell a house, a commission is going to be made, and the company EXP is just going to share part of their profit with you. So it's called a revenue share. It's not multi-level. It's not a scheme. You don't have to buy a product or anything like that. It's just the way that they recruit agents. Instead of having like a sales manager who recruits agents in every office, they just said, hey, why don't we just have the agents recruit other agents and then we'll pay them part of our profit, right? So like Keller Williams, any brokerage where you go to, they take a cut off every deal, right? And then from there, they pay their office managers, their sales managers, their investors, whoever put in for that office, all those different things. For EXP, they just said, hey, we're not going to have no offices. We're going to get rid of all that overhead, all those costs. We're going to do everything online. And then whatever profit we make, we're going to pay half of our profit back to the agents. So it's a lot different, right? Like you actually have to sell a house, a commission has to be made and they're just sharing part of their revenue. It's like a, it's a, pro, it's like a profit sharing uh, program, but it's, it's a lot better than, than like a Keller Williams profit because it's actually not a profit sharing. Profit means only if there's a profit. 
it's a revenue sharing, meaning whatever came in, they just pay half of it back. That's what they do. Yeah. Well, That's I was with Keller Williams, and that is the difference. So profit share is only if the office makes money that month. So after overhead and expenses, yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question. I mean, I'm not even sure if this is something like in your realm, but like, cause I brought it up before and that's what I always get. Oh, I heard it like from other agents. If I tell them I'm part of EXP, they're also, they'll, they'll say like, oh yeah, the pyramid scheme. Um, you know how we do like script practice for just when we're object for objections on like, you know, I can't make an offer cause the market or interest rate or whatever. Um, would that be something that you guys would, would be willing to do? Like kind of go over like scenarios and role-playing like, because like, for example, like if someone, another agent does say like, oh yeah, I've heard about it, but you know, it's like a pyramid scheme or whatnot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. We can definitely do a script, a script training on that. And that's going to lead us into like the next part right now. And we'll, we'll end with this part of what's the right way to recruit agents, right. And to a, and then the first thing is, is to change the word recruit, right? To change the word to attract, right? What's the right way to attract agents? The way you attract someone is by having something of value, right? There has to be something of value because we don't, you can say like, hey, like if you join me at eXp, like I don't make any money. Like if you don't sell any houses, I don't, I don't make any money, right? Like no one makes any money. You don't make no money. The company doesn't make no money. I don't make a revenue share, anything like that. If you don't sell any homes. The big benefit of our group at eXp is that we're going to show you how to grow your business and how to produce more, how to take your business to the next level, how to build systems, processes. You're going to be able to learn from the best agents in the industry who are selling thousands of homes per year. That's what you get when you join me. Whereas if you go to another brokerage, you got to go try to like, scratch backs, bribe people, like top producers aren't just willing to share information with you. And that's how it is. Like at any other big brokerage guys, like the top producers busy, like they're busy. Like they don't have time to sit, take you to lunch and like show you how they run their business because there's no incentive for them, right? There's no incentive unless you're on their team or unless they're making money off you or something, they're not going to give you the time of day. Whereas with EXP, if you close deals, and you're under me, I make a little piece. The company shares a little bit of their profit. If you close deals, the stock does better, right? The better the company does, the better the stock does. So then everyone is participating in the stock, which means we all make money through stock. So it's a completely different pitch where you need to lead with, how can I help you produce more? And that's the big difference between like some of the sleazy agents, because there's always going to be sleazy agents in every organization. You got some of the EXP agents who they're just, hey, you want to join me? You're going to make a million bucks. You're going to make all this money. Those are the ones who don't do well, right? Those are the ones who give companies a bad name. But with our group, they call us, they call our group, the fast forward movement, the producer group, because we actually outproduce the whole entire company. It's like, we're going to show you how to produce more. We're going to show you how to close more deals, how to get more buyers, get more sellers, build more systems. You're going to be able to mastermind with us, be coached by the top agents in the, in the entire uh, country. And through that, you're going to build a more profitable business. And as you build a more profitable business, the company rewards me by giving me a piece of their revenue. That's basically what it is. So the way that you're going to recruit people is by leveraging the stuff in our group, right? The Monday mastermind is probably the most powerful thing. And that's why we use the Monday mastermind to invite people to come check us out. The same way that we invite agents to our Tuesday meeting, you want to invite agents to our Monday mastermind, right? And then you should also be on those Monday masterminds because you're going to be learning a lot of good shit on those Monday masterminds, right? If you invite an agent from outside of EXP to the Monday Mastermind, there's a 90% chance that they're going to be impressed with the stuff that they hear. Because it's literally like, it's just different from every other office. It's like agents saying, here, here's how I do it. Copy it. Here's how I'm doing it. They're giving you exact, they're not holding any punches. They're not holding any secrets. They're fully open. They're giving you copies to the PDFs. They're giving you links to their websites. They're saying, here, copy what I'm doing. 
right? It's there's fully open, fully transparent like that. You guys know our buyer presentation that we use today? Did you know I got that from Kenny? Like we had a buyer presentation already, but I was looking to make mine better. And Kenny's above me. I'm like, hey, bro, can I get a copy of your buyer presentation? I need some ideas. He's like, here you go. He gave me the Canva. Said, edit it, make it your own. Just like that. How many times have we used that buyer presentation to close deals? Hundreds, probably thousands by this time, by this point, right? But see, because we have that relationship with Kenny where he's incentivized to help me because he's going to make a little piece off the revenue, right? From our cap that we pay to EXP. He wants to help me all day, all long, right? Anything I need, like he jumps on Zooms with me. Like he's trying to help me grow because he makes money if I grow. So it's when you can tell stories like this and when you can give examples where people start to go, oh, okay, well, that's not really a scheme, right? It's like, it's a bunch of agents helping each other out. And then as they help each other out, the company pays them a little piece of the pie. That's basically what it is, right? So what I would always do is, is if I have an agent that I'm interested in attracting, I'm not going to say recruiting no more, attracting, I would always lead in with questions like, hey, Anna, this role plays real quick. Anna, can you unmute? Mm -hmm. Hey, Anna, so um, well, let's say we just closed a deal together, right? Like I, you were the listing agent. I was the buyer agent. We had a great, great chemistry, great relationship. And I'm calling you after the fact. Uh, hey, Anna, uh, how's it going? Hey, Enrique, uh, doing well. How are you? Good, good. Hey, I just wanted to call, you know, just to thank you for all your help on this deal. You know, the, I'm glad it went smooth. My buyers are extremely happy. Like, thanks for, for taking our offer. Um, you know, I, I noticed, I, I'm not going to lie, I, I uh, spied on you a little bit. I noticed like you're producing a lot and like you're doing a lot of cool things. And, um, you know, I'm trying to grow my business. And I'm sure you're trying to grow your business. And I just wanted to uh, invite you to one of our masterminds that we have every Monday with a bunch of the top agents in our company. Um, you know, because I think someone like you can benefit and probably even contribute. So I'm just wondering if you'd be interested in checking out like a high level mastermind. It's, it's on zoom, it's free. Um, and it's next Monday at 10 AM. Uh, yeah, honestly, that sounds really good. I won't lie. I say I looked you up too, and you guys are producing at a high level. I, it doesn't hurt to see what else is out there, I guess. Okay, cool. Yeah. And like what we do, like what I'm all about is just like collaborating with the best agents. So because obviously we keep those relationships going. We can help each other out. I'm sure we'll run into each other on another deal. So um, yeah, I'd love if you can come check it out and hopefully you get some value out of it. Yeah, of course. And then um, you said that there's a lot of agents on there too, where you ask questions. Yeah, no, there's this this mastermind every Monday. There's uh, there's probably like four to 500 of the top agents in, in the US. It's really good. They share um, like everything they're doing. You can ask questions, you can put in the chat. It's led by some of the top producers. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a really powerful thing that we do every Monday. Okay. I mean, that sounds good. I, I look forward to seeing that Zoom link. All right, cool. I'll send you the Zoom link. Boom. Uh, so that's, that's what you do, right? I just made that up right now. FYI, like kind of freestyled it, but the basis of it was Congratulations. Great meeting with you. I'm looking to continue to collaborate and network with top agents just like you. Um, we have this awesome mastermind on every Monday. Uh, I'd love for you to check it out because I think, you know, I know you want to grow your business. I want to grow mine. It's all about growth. It's all about helping people produce at a higher level. It's free. It's on Zoom. You know, would you love to, would you like to come out and check it out? Right. And then what you're going to do is that's all you're going to do. You're just inviting people. You invite them to the Zoom, you give them the link. When they go on there, the mastermind is going to sell itself, right? They're going to hear Dan, they're going to hear Kyle, they're going to hear some of these top agents, and they're going to be like, oh shit, I'm not getting that, this at my office. Like the other top producers in my office, those are my competition. They ain't sharing shit with me, right? Like, you know, the Joe Velasco's like, that fool never tells me how he's doing it, right? Like, Joe's my friend, FYI, but. Uh, you know, the Brett Jennings or whoever, like they're super busy, right? Like these guys ain't like taking me out to lunch, telling me their secrets, right? And over here in this freaking Zoom, like everyone's just sharing their secrets, like things that I never even heard of, right? So what you do is you expose them to that environment. 
And then afterwards, you follow up to see what they thought, right? To see what they thought about it and to try to invite them to the next you know, level or maybe set up a, a Zoom with, with me or with Kenny or with Daniel Beer or whoever it might be that's gonna be a higher up than them that's gonna uh, influence them and, and uh, impress them, right? Literally, that's all you have to do, guys. You guys just need to be the connectors. That's it. And then we figure out, okay, depending on the agent, right? If it's an agent that's doing a lot less than like our team, then yeah, I'll meet with that guy because I'm going to be able to give that guy a lot of value. If it's an agent that's equal to me, maybe he's doing as much as we are, I'm probably going to want to bring in someone that's higher producing at a higher level than me, right? If it's a big shot, I probably want to bring in Daniel Beer, Kyle Whistle, right? And then from there, like those guys are going to help recruit and and pitch them on the vision and, and why they would want to collaborate with our group uh, questions who thinks they can do that now here's what's going to happen right anna made it easy right oh yeah for sure i'll oh, come on right you're going to have those because if you've carried yourself well through the whole entire transaction you've already made an impression on them because you showed them how you work and there's already credibility there. So it's an easy invite, right? It's like inviting one of your friends to come hang out. But now if you had a shitty ass transaction and like you just dropped the ball and you weren't responsive, like you already made a bad impression, you're gonna get some pushback, right? And you may not wanna call that agent and invite them or you may wanna redeem yourself first before you start inviting them to some other stuff, right? <laughs> but I already know how you guys work, right? If you're on this call, that means you're a higher level agent. That's just the bottom line, right? So though all you guys on this call hold yourself at a higher standard at a higher level, right? You guys are, are the top agents on our team. So I know you guys conduct yourselves well. You guys are all about building relationships. So that's not gonna be an issue with, with the majority of you guys. Um, you're gonna have agents that say, oh yeah, for sure. Like it was a pleasure working with you. I'd love to check that out. And here's the thing, other producers, they always wanna grow, right? If you're a top producer, Part of being a top producer is having a growth mindset. It's the ones that are closing the one or twos here and there that aren't producing shit. Those are the ones that are skeptical about everything. Oh yeah, I heard about that. That's a scheme. Well, you only closed one deal this whole past year, bro. Like, do you want to grow or not? <laughs> right? But so that's why it's even better to go after people who are like mid-level or higher level. Because the guys that are like barely closing any, they still got to go through all the shit to figure out if like real estate is for them, right? Those are the ones that are gonna be the hardest to make an impression on because if they're not running their business at a high level already or at a decent level, they have other issues beyond like trying to help them grow over here. But if they're running at a decent level, maybe they're a mid-level agent, they're closing a handful of transactions a year, they conduct themselves well, those are people you wanna recruit because those are people that will actually grow and help you grow in the process. You don't wanna bring shit shitty agents to our group. That's just the bottom line, right? Because that, that waters down the group. So don't also just say like, oh, I'm missing a fucking recruit. Everybody I know. Think of like, who would I want to partner with? Who would I want to be under me? Who would I want to meet with and help out and give advice to? Who would I want to expose to this higher level group and these higher players? It's going to be agents who are operating at a, at a decent and a high level, right? And it's, I, I don't think there's any other way to make it this simple, guys. It's just you guys already know who the agents are that are the decent ones, the higher level ones, the, the players that you guys can build relationships with. Just invite them and expose them to the stuff that we're doing. And do it like, don't do it in a sleazy way. Don't talk about, don't talk about recruiting. Don't talk about, revenue share. Don't talk about stock. Just talk about, hey, we have this powerful mastermind that helps agents grow their business. And it's led by some of the top agents in our company that are doing thousands of deals a year, right? Would you like to come check this thing out? I have, it's an invite only. There's a password. I only get a couple seats every Monday to invite a couple guests. Would you like to be one of my exclusive guests? The reason I'm inviting you is because you did an awesome job. It was great working with you. 
I think you're someone that I can collaborate with or have a, a networking partnership with, I'd love to invite you to check this thing out. That gets the ball rolling, that opens up the conversation and then we just follow the steps from there and see, you know, some will, some won't, some will love it, but won't wanna change, but that now creates a better relationship with you. Some will say like, damn, I'm freaking sold. Like, what do I gotta do? You know, who do I gotta talk to? Or I really like this group, you know, how can I find out more information about this? And then some will come check it out and then they won't, they won't say anything, right? Oh yeah, that was cool, not interested. Feedback, questions. You got anything to add, Jay? Yeah, you know, I just, again, I know you probably touched on this, guys, but a big a big takeaway for Enrique and I when we, when we you know, let go of our independent brokerage is, you know, we're always going to be selling real estate, but to have this another vehicle just running while we're selling real estate, it's just having an add-on product. Right. And then this add on product continues to build so that in 10, 15, 20 years, then you're receiving the benefits of, of what you've been all the work you've been putting into in your real estate business. And that to me was a big, big takeaway because we're always going to run. You know, we're always going to be selling real estate. We're always going to be doing that. But people are always going to come up to Anna and, and, and you guys say, hey, how how is it over there? What are you guys doing? I'm thinking about getting my license. So you're, you're just leading by production. And then naturally people are going to be attracted to it. And then you're just introducing them. You're not even, you're not even selling them or recruiting them. It is just an introduction. And then, you know, Enrique and myself, the, our, our uplines can help facilitate that. And you guys continue to sell real estate, what you guys came here to do. It is just an add-on product. And to me, that's a, that's a game changer because Enrique and I have been doing this for 20 years. You imagine if, we, have, we, have, we had this when we first started our business, how many agents we would have underneath us at this time. So especially with you guys being younger agents and you know been in the business maybe only a few years, this is a long-term thought process. This is a long-term, we wish we'd have done this 20 years ago, right? You guys are getting into it maybe one to maybe three years. Now you guys are gonna start building this next 20 years. If you just add one or two agents, like, like Enrique's example, it just hits that domino effect, right? So I think that's for me is one of the bigger takeaways when Enrique sat down when we sat down about doing this. Um, and again, this was brought to us a couple of years prior to us joining, but we wanted to make sure we had our systems in place. Now that we have these systems, now it's a lot easier for us to talk to other agents because, like, no, we it's not theory, guys. We actually have we have our production, we have our numbers, we have this these masterminds, these coachings that we can bring you to. So again, I think it, it's something to be. Um, just to recognize and understand that you guys have the, you know, we, we have this opportunity, right? Yeah. And guys, the way that you're going to establish belief, because obviously I can come on here and present and paint the picture really well, right? You know, I'm, I'm a salesperson, right? So I, I, I want to take that away. Like I'm not trying to sell you guys. The way that you're going to truly see the value is by you showing up to these masterminds and you learning more about it. Because when you start to come on these masterminds and you start to get exposed to this like outside, you know, of PRG thinking, um, you're going to see like, damn, there's some really good stuff in there, right? And once you experience it for yourself and you're able to take some of these concepts and make these tweaks in your business, then your level of confidence and conviction goes up to where now you're confident in, in talking to someone about our group because you've experienced our group firsthand, Right. So you have to actively participate in these masterminds. So the Monday mastermind, anybody on this call, if you're already up and running, you're producing, you need to be on these Monday masterminds as well. This is the benefit of you being at EXP and being under our group. Um, we don't want EXP just to be like an afterthought. PRG and then like, oh, there's this little thing in the background called EXP. Like, no, I want you to guys to take this serious, like, this is my sales business. This is an agent attraction. This is a whole group of resources that we have through our parent company, EXP, right? When you take it serious, guys, then you're going to start to build some stuff. And it's awesome. It's, it's a slow process, right? But it's something where little by little, you start building. And before you know it, you're like, damn, I, it's, it's significant. I wish I would have taken this more serious a long time ago. Uh, so that's what I'm going to leave you guys with. I know this is a lot of information. I hope you guys got some value today. If you guys have any other questions on the side, feel free to hit me up. But we'll continue to expose you guys to more of this so that we can uh, we can um, implement this into our business. Enrique, one last thing. One last thing, guys. 
and this is just from the onboarding I did yesterday. Make sure you guys download the EXP world onto your laptop. I don't know if you guys all have it, but make sure you guys do that because there's tons of other opportunities in there. I don't want to go into too much detail, but I included the link to download it to your laptop in the chat. Please download that and it'll go ahead. At least you guys get started, log in. You can play around in there. Tons of opportunity and information in there. Yeah, we'll put it in Slack too, guys. I'll put it in Slack. I'll put the links to the training, the EXP world, all the different things that you can download. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, guys.